I want to talk about respect, prestige and subtlety today and how the loudest voice in the room often has the least to say. All you really need to do is look in the background for the quiet ones being clever and just getting on with stuff. The new Audi A and S8 is sure quiet and is definitely clever. Audi's A8 has been around for a while and, it's in case you hadn't guessed, a big exec limo for big execs to be big and executive in. Always loaded with tech, toys and space, it's really the kind of car you buy to sit in the back of, while someone in your employ takes you to where you need to be busy and important at next. The back of one of these is honestly a joy to be in. There's plenty of room for me to properly recline, stretch out, relax, or if I want to, I can do some work, I can watch stuff on the screens, I can play this little touchpad down here to adjust stuff in the car, I can even recline and fiddle with my seat. It's all a bit Star Trek in here. The Star Trek vibes don't only come from the toys, but the interior design of the thing. Crisp lines, shiny surfaces, smooth materials, angles all over the place, and mood lighting that you can change to red alert if the mood takes you. The inside is very plush, we like that a lot, but I'm really impressed with the outside. Why? Well, because it's not impossibly ugly. It's not bad to look at at all. When you look at cars in this class, about 100 grand luxe limo things, well, there are two real competitors. The BMW 7 Series, the new one's just broken cover, and it's got a uh, distinctive design, and of course, the Mercedes S Class, which looks, well, it looks a bit like a giant mole. All three of those cars have a giant grill. You know, got to wear the company face. They are, after all, the flagships. However, there's wearing a face and then there's wearing a face. And the Audi, it's not too facey. It's not a small car at all. It's just under 5.2 metres long and over too wide if you count the massive wing mirrors. You can't call it subtle, but the design team hasn't gone overboard with the shape. It's not overtly swoopy nor pointy, it's a big car with strong lines. This is where the whole loudest voice thing comes in. You see, with the comparative anonymity of the A8, you get the impression that Audi knew that it didn't need to try anything big, wild and silly in order to make its customer base happy. It knows what they want, a big giant slab of wafty car. Exactly what this is. Except remember what I said earlier about the quiet ones being the clever ones? This is a clever one. This thing has a party piece. When you open the door, its air suspension will lift the car to help you get in more easily. Its predictive suspension will also use itself to prop the car up in high-speed corners so you stay flat and your coffee unspilled. And in the event of a crash, the car will, well, should, figure out you're about to have an accident and will raise the springs to keep the passengers safe. See? It's clever. But I did lie about the quiet bit. A touch, at least. A normal A8 would be all quiet and wafty, but this is not a normal A8. This is an S8. That means it's got a 4-litre turbocharged V8 with 571 horsepower and 590 pound-foot. All that power is fired to all four wheels, thanks to a Quattro Sport differential and an 8-speed automatic gearbox. 0 to 62 takes 3.8 seconds, which is alarmingly fast when you consider this thing weighs well over two tonnes, and its top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour, which is handy if you're late for your next meeting, and it's on the other side of France. The S Audis, for those not paying attention at the back, are the quickish ones. Not quite full on RS, but brisk enough to make a dull day brighter. That said, with nearly 600 brake horsepower on board, it doesn't feel entirely fair to say it's sporting rather than sporty. That might be a little difficult though, because this weighs more than a house. It's massive. But let's start with how it actually is on the day to day normally when you're not going full S8. It's like driving a cloud, even though it does weigh a thousand million kilos. In comfort plus mode, you just sort of glide everywhere. There's no engine noise, no real engine noise, unless you're really pressing on. The steering is light and airy. Of course, there's very little feedback. It's all wheel drive and it's not really designed for that. You simply want to turn the wheel and trust that you go the way you want it to. The gearbox shifts imperceptibly. The suspension is super, super soft. Only the really harshest roads will get through it. Yeah, it's a step away from a roller, but 
Still, driving through town early this morning, I was unruffled. I was, I was comfortable. I could easily breeze my way through and not worry about anything. The sound system, beautiful Bang & Olufsen, was playing my podcast as loud as I'd like it. The safety systems didn't really buzz or get in the way. It was just an experience, quiet, calm, peaceful. It's pretty lovely. I get why people buy these just for themselves, because you just... You waft. You are in a little bubble, hidden away from the rest of the world. So you can, if you're in the back, get on with whatever work you need to do. Or if you're in the front, you just sort of forget what's going on. You can rest while driving this. The drive modes to play with, of which there are many, there's efficiency, which does obviously what you think it does. There's auto, which lets the car decide what to do. There's comfort plus, which is the one you really want to live in on the day to day. Individual to choose your own adventure. But then if you really want to experience the S in S8, you press dynamic. And what dynamic does is, well, it, it makes everything a little angrier. The gearbox goes into S mode, which means sporty. You hear a bit more of the engine and well, the powertrain as this. <laughs> it keeps the effortlessness up. It's still effortless. All of a sudden you look down and you're doing ridiculous speeds. But you don't really feel it because it's still the comfortable limo car. You just go, foot down. Ah yes, I'm now on the other side of France and soon to be heading into Liechtenstein and then maybe a quick nip to the Netherlands for a stroop waffle and a cup of coffee. It's really, really fast. I mean, it's really, really fast in comfort mode, but you can toy with it a bit in dynamic. This is the driver's bit of it. This can still be a little bit of a driver's car. Do not get me wrong. An RS6, this is not. An RS4, this is not. It's a more relaxed way to cross vast tracts of land alarmingly quickly. The steering up here, it's still not feedback-tacular. I mean, I'm not experiencing every inch of what's going on underneath the front wheels, but again, it's not that kind of car. It's just really bloody quick. The suspension stiffens up a little bit too, so I do feel a little bit more of what's going under the car. It is a little more jarring. My gut wobbles a bit when it gets rough, but again, I'm not flustered. It's not unpleasant in any way. It's just a little bit less pleasant than it is in comfort mode. The steering, a little more weighty, but that's kind of it. I do want to talk a bit more about how comfortable it is. So this car has come spec'd with heated and ventilated front seats. So there's a fan in here and it's cooling my, my bottom and my back. I can also, if I press a button on the side here, have a massage and I can choose whichever massage I want. I can have waves or circles or something called activation. So I'm going to be activated like some sort of sleeper agent, I imagine. The infotainment system, I've been playing with it. I've been toying with it. It's not slow, it's quick, it's slick, you can play with the maps, you can pinch, you can zoom. And there's some decent haptics going on here. So there are two screens. The one up top does the infotainment stuff, media, uh, car settings, bits like that. And the one down below, you fiddle with climate control and parking sensors and all that kind of stuff. Also, I can raise the rear blind from here. So there's one over the rear window and one over each of the side windows to give my passengers utmost secrecy if they don't want to be seen. I like that. I like that a lot. Of course, in the back, there's a little touchpad so they can adjust their own seat and their positioning on it. They can adjust the, the radio because, of course, if they're in the back, they are the ones in control and they should be in control. So we just let them have their radio station as they like it. Or those screens have an HDMI in, which means you can probably attach a Nintendo Switch to it and play Mario Kart on the go, which is just brilliant. Or Gran Turismo, so you can drive a car while you're in a car. Well, maybe the design could be a little bolder, but it's a good looking big comfy slab of a thing. The people that get into this aren't going to be like, oh, well, I don't particularly like the tertiary ride quality. No, they're going to sit in it and go, oh, yeah, this is comfy, I like this. And I can't think of much I dislike about it because if I was looking for a proper driver's car from Audi, I'd have a crack at an RS6. 
or an RS4. That's where you get those kicks. This is a point and squirt kind of affair. So, okay, I want to be over there now. Three, two, one, go. Apparently 20% of A8 sold will come with an S badge, which seems rather strange at first if you're sitting in the back having lots of power up front seems foolish, doesn't it? But then again, why do we buy the latest smartphone or the most up-to-date fashion? The old one still takes calls or hides your thunder from people in the street. We buy them because we want them. And 20% of A8 customers want a big V8. More power to their elbows, frankly. I do have one quite concern though, and it's that cars like this seem to be a dying breed, being replaced by SUVs. And well, we'll make it a bit like people carriers. Great idea in period, very much de rigueur, but now no longer a thing. Only the difference here is that the people this carries is worth millions and millions of pounds, and the people people carriers carried, well, they dribbled for a living. You don't get respect by being bullshy and throwing your weight around. You get respect by being good at what you do and doing it well. And the S8 doesn't shout about everything it can do. It simply does it. And it does it largely brilliantly. No, it's not the most engaging drive in the world. And there's lots of weird piano black trim in there, which I don't really like. It's easy to smudge, but as an experience, as what it needs to do, does it brilliantly.